Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. We will continue with the topic of freezing and freeze drying today. Uh, in the previous class, we have uh, discussed that how freezing uh, takes place in case of uh, food material or in case of liquid water, what are the mechanisms and uh, what is the time required to uh, calculate the total freezing time based on Planck's equation and FAMS method. Okay. So, today we will see that what are the changes, what are the quality changes takes place during freezing. So, effect of freezing rate or crystal growth on product quality. So, uh, we have seen that uh, the method by which we uh, you know freeze the product is that first uh, the nucleation happens as we lower the temperature. So, nucleation happens and then the crystal growth starts okay. and the process at which uh, I, I mean and the rate at which this process will takes place and that is again governed by the rate at which the heat removal takes place will have definite effect on the quality of the food. So, if we see the uh, if we see the structure of biological cells normally we know that uh, why we call freezing is a very effective method is because by freezing we can keep the nutritional quality almost intact the flavor uh, and color to some extent uh, we can preserve very well compared to the other uh, preservation techniques where we lower the water activity by heat treatment mechanism. Okay. But the problem is that in the texture of the food, so there may be some compromise we need to make because of uh, freezing. So, how that happen actually? Uh, if we look into the the structure of a biological cell, let us say these are the cell and between the two cells the uh, intercellular fluids are there. So, that fluid having the dilute concentration compared to the cellular material. Okay. So, when we lower the temperature, then first that intercellular moisture will try to freeze out. So, the nucleation starts there first and then uh, the uh, I mean the further uh, processing of the of, or further freezing will takes place. So, the osmotic pressure differential that uh, you know present in the intercellular fluid and between the cell uh, in inner inner cell structure that is maintained by the cell membrane or cell wall okay so that is uh, called the target of a of a cell okay now uh, because of this this uh, pressure balance it the, the structure of the cell is intact now, by any way, if we uh, you know make some or cause some disbalance in the uh, in the pressure differential, then what can happen? The moisture from the cell side will go to the intercellular space. So that is uh, another uh, phenomena. So during freezing, uh, these two mechanisms can happen. One is because of the pressure, water vapor pressure fluctuation, the Inter, uh, in the inner cellular moisture may come out to the intercellular spaces and another thing may happen that because of rate of freezing, slow freezing or fast freezing, the different crystal growth formation takes place and that may cause uh, you know breakage or disruption of the cell wall and uh, for that also the, the uh, stru structure or texture of the food will be hampered. Okay. So, when uh, this uh, beca because of the freezing the moisture from the cell is com comes out in the intercellular space because the uh, the moisture in the intercellular space will freeze and the it, it will become more concentrated in the solute. So, that moisture cannot be regained during thawing. So, if we want to reuse this 
uh, you know frozen food and to want to consume it and we want to regain its initial uh, structure by thawing. So, the moisture within the cell will not be regained. So, that is uh, although that is not very much significant compared to the other drying mechanism because if we if we dry normally uh, by heat treatment and then we go for rehydration for consumption of the food. So, then uh, the structural damage is permanent most of the cases therefore, there is a gap we have found between the adsorption and desorption curve that we call hysteresis. We have discussed that in, in the uh, water activity section. So, uh, not that much damage we can expect in case of freezing, but some cellular structure damage may happen okay. and also if we perform the freezing at a faster rate that is the rapid freezing, then what happen that a large number of nucleation happens uh, and in a more uniform or distributed pattern and there is not much large crystal growth at any point that can break or disturb the cell structure. However, if it is a slow freezing process, then what happen that the uh, you know points of nucleation is very less and once it happens uh, because of slow freezing uh, also, also the molecular mobility is less, but they try to adhere to the small uh, nucleation that happens and that eventually get bigger and bigger ice. Uh, crystal formation takes place and that will cause the destruction in the cell structure. Also, they will break the structure and intercellular material can come out and all these things may happen. So, the structural damage may be there. So, faster rate of freezing is marginally better than the slower in most of the food products. In plant tissues formation of large ice crystal can cause mechanical damage to the cell wall and also the cell dehydration as I have mentioned that because the cell moisture is coming out to the intercellular spaces. So, cell dehydration will happen which is a permanent phenomena we cannot gain it fully I mean regain the initial stage during the thawing process. Larger the freezing time means development of large crystal heterogeneously and smaller the freezing time means homogeneous nucleation in large numbers. The rapid freezing of cellular starchy food resulted in a better quality product than the slow freezing. And one more important thing is that because uh, you know if, if this freezing uh, thing happen that, that the structure if it uh, have uniform effect during the freezing then thawing also will be uniform ok. So, that that way also we should uh, we should prefer the uh, faster freezing mechanism. So, physical change and quality if we uh, discuss so during freezing most of the food products are susceptible to different deteriorative and enzymatic reaction which may affect the shelf life. So, uh, it is not that we are removing the moisture completely we are freezing the moisture and thereby we are decreasing the mobility, but we need to be very cautious that if any temperature fluctuation happens and the uh, liquid will uh, you know from the frozen stage to the liquid water conversion happens then the quality uh, degradation may be there. And also, the uh, sometime it may happen that uh, because all moisture in a food may not freeze okay, as we lower the temperature because the uh, water will become more concentrated in the solute present. So, it may happen that uh, even if minus 40 degree Celsius also some amount of uh, you know moisture remains and that has become concentrated in a particular solute or in uh, enzymes and may happen that uh, in, in very uh, you know selective places some deteriorative changes uh, can cause. Weight loss in animal tissue happens as they lose moisture during freezing process because their surface is exposed to heat and moisture gradient exists within the environment. So, this, uh, this can happen and freezer burn, freezer burn uh, is an uh, important uh, phenomena 
which, which occurs as moisture evaporates from the surface. So, it mainly happens due to dehumidification or oxidation. Now, this uh, we can see that freezer burn is uh, may happen more commonly if we go for the freeze drying, we will discuss the freeze drying later. So, this, this will form a dry grainy brownish area that becomes tough eventually and it can be controlled by humidification or proper packaging and storage temperature. So, uh, we can we can see this kind of phenomena if we expose the food to the blast freezer uh, unless the air velocity is is kept about 2.5 meter per second. So, if we uh, we keep the unpackaged product and very high velocity we maintain that time this kind of freezer burn may be observed. So, this is not some change that that will cause the food uh, you know un uh, consumable, but only thing the desirability will be uh, slightly reduced as the color formation is uh, may not be liked by the consumer. Certain functional properties also change because of freezing uh, such as some rheological property that is flow property, textural, mechanical, consistency, appearance, water holding capacity, sensory attributes. Okay. So, uh, this all are uh, associated al although uh, most of the attributes are uh, you know qualitative at attributes can be properly managed with freezing phenomena. Textural changes has been noticed as water freezes, ice crystal grows and expand the food which may be responsible for rupturing as we have mentioned in case of the slow freezing. Sensory characteristics changes as development of rancid flavor during frozen storage of marine products due to uh, due to freeze concentration decreases in pH causes faster protein denaturation. So, uh, what happened that if the moisture most of the moisture has been uh, frozen. So, sometime the uh, the product is exposed to the uh, ambient air or uh, where the oxygen concentration will be higher and then some oxidative changes uh, or may happen because if the uh, if the fat portion is exposed to the oxidative environment also because of uh, you know effect of the uh, uh, effect of the pH protein denaturation may happen okay so this all happen because of the change in the concentration these are required in a certain concentration uh, for for their activity but if that concentration varies because of freezing because the moisture is uh, you know free so it is not available so therefore this sensory undesirable sensory changes may be there so rancidity develops due to the rapid acceleration of lipid oxidation in frozen fish color affected during frozen storage the green color of vegetable is lost by chlorophyll degradation during freezing and frozen storage and in poultry carcasses with rapid surface freezing which generate a smooth chalky white surface flavor and aroma loss for frozen strawberry as a result of rapid degradation of esters and the destruction of vitamin c occurs during freezing at frozen storage. So, vitamin C uh, is very sensitive to temperature change that therefore, at low temperature also it, it is uh, getting destroyed. Now, next uh, the important thing that we need to study is freeze drying. Till now we have discussed about freezing. So, in the freezing what we are doing we are not removing the water, but we are decreasing the mobility of the water by freezing it. So, the free availability of the of the water is not there. So, uh, the uh, contamination microbial contamination or enzymatic activity uh, or qualitative uh, degradation will be reduced to some extent, but in case of freezing we need to maintain the condition throughout uh, the, the low temperature condition throughout that is why we need the uh, cold chain arrangement because if any fluctuation of temperature happens then the uh, liquid 
may convert from I stage to the li uh, liquid water and then the contamin uh, then the deterioration reaction will start. Now, when we uh, say the freeze drying, the uh, freeze drying involves some uh, a set of uh, you know steps where we freeze the liquid water to ice first and then we try to remove it from the food material okay so that the moisture is not available there and then if any time we want to we want to consume it it's a dry product we uh, can then uh, you know use it and the quality and the quality of the product the color flavor everything is uh, intact and very good now freeze drying mostly because it's very costly um, uh, method so it has been mostly used in the uh, pharmaceutical or biotechnology sector uh, for for um, antibiotics and uh, all those application but after 1950 uh, freeze drying has been used in a significant amount for the food material also so we will see that what are the steps of freeze drying how we can improve the quality uh, what is the mechanism and what kind of dryers available and also the uh, heat and mass transfer involved with the process so first we'll see uh, okay all all such contents we will cover one by one and uh, here we can see that freeze dried products looks very uh, nice and the color flavor texture is uh, very much intact and we are getting very good uh, porous structure in the in the freeze drying the structure is not collapsed like all other uh, drying methods so what is the fundamental concept of freeze drying or we also call it lyophilization the product is dried by direct sublimation of the ice crystal under reduced pressure so sublimation we know that by sublimation we convert the ice to vapor directly not the intermediate phase that is liquid phase is coming in this case and we want to dry it to final moisture content of 1 to 4 percent weight basis so what we uh, what we freeze dry normally the fresh fruits and vegetable muscle food like prawn fish uh, then meat product okay so all such products fresh or cooked food these are frozen and placed in a vacuum chamber so fro we are freezing first and then we are keeping it in the vacuum chamber then about 90% of the food moisture is drawn off by evaporating the ice at a temperature as low as minus 50 degree celsius and after freeze drying we will uh, we will pack the dry food in a proper package and then seal them uh, we will select the package in such a way so that the moisture permeation or gas permeation will be least and then when the water is replaced the food regain its original fresh flavor aroma texture and appearance that is after rehydration we can use them and we will get the most of the initial uh, quality of the sample intact. So, roughly if we compare the benefits of freeze drying over the conventional drying what we can get in the conventional drying the food material is exposed to a continuous flow of hot stream of air where the moisture evaporates. So, we, we expose them to a continuous flow of hot stream where in case of freeze drying removal of ice or frozen solvent from a material through sublimation. Then uh, the temperature ranges from 37 to 93 degree Celsius in case of conventional drying and in case of freeze drying below freezing point we need to keep the temperature. Here we perform atmospheric uh, pressure drying in case of conventional and we need reduced pressure environment for freeze drying. Okay. So, here it is 101.325 K 
kilo Pascal and here we can see 27 to 133 Pascal. Movement of solutes and sometime case hardening this happened that means movement of the solute is there because mobility of the liquid moisture is there and sometime case hardening happen when the surface gets dry quickly uh, and then this, this kind of phenomena which is an undesirable changes can cause in case of the conventional drying and minimal solute movement we are getting in case of freeze drying. Stresses in solid food cause cell rupture and shrinkage okay. and minimal structural changes or shrinkage happen in case of freeze drying. So, solid or porous dried particle often having a higher density than the original food. Solid or product dried particle often have a higher density because the volume will reduce to a significant extent okay. and here in case of freeze drying porous dried particle having a lower density than the original food is normally observed. In case of conventional odor and flavor frequently um, abnormal reduced nutritional value we will get because all such happen because of the uh, high temperature treatment that will cause the uh, denaturation and reduction in the uh, heat sensitive components. And here in case of freeze drying the odor flavor usually normal and nutritional value retained. So, now we will see that how or what is the principle of this freeze drying. Here we can see the phase diagram of water. So, there we can see the all three phases solid, liquid and gas ok. Solid, liquid and gas these three phases are there and triple point which is the point where all three phases coexist right. So, we need to perform the operation somewhere below this point so that we can directly convert ice to vapor ok. So, uh, by now we have learned all three uh, methods such as hot air drying that we have discussed where liquid to vapor transfer uh, we have done. So, we are providing latent heat of vaporization and the moisture is coming out. Then we have seen the freezing ok, freezing phenomena where first sensible heat reduction and then latent heat uh, of fusion that we have extracted or removed from the uh, from the water and in the in this case sublimation ok. So, here directly from the ice to vapor. So, here obviously we need to provide uh, much uh, larger amount of uh, you know uh, heat so that it can be directly sublime. So, direct transition from the solid to gaseous state without going through the liquid stage and this can occur only if the vapor pressure and temperature are below the triple point of water that is below 611.73 Pascal and 0. 0 0.01 degree Celsius. So, here is the here is the triple point uh, this is the pressure we need to perform below that and also the temperature. So, we need to perform below this point. So, freezing is at uh, normally 0 degree also it, it for the pure water uh, sometime we, we have observed that uh, super cooling will be there which is, which is a which is a uh, meta stable uh, state. But in this case for sublimation we need to go below 0 0.01 degree Celsius and 611.73 Pascal. So, which is the uh, lower pressure and temperature condition compared to the triple point ok. So, so sublimation uh, is the process of solid to gas transfer and deposition is gas to solid transfer. So, in case of freeze drying what we do first we freeze all the moisture uh, in the product under the uh, uh, low temperature situation. Then we keep it in inside a vacuum and we try to remove all the ice crystal formed in the 
uh, uh, in the food sample. Okay. So, this is how we uh, perform the freeze drying, when then we will go to detail of uh, the, this process and the, the equation involved for the heat and mass transfer. So, we will stop here and we will move on to the uh, next lecture. Thank you.